Welcome back, guys. Today, I'm going to be tying up the Black Ghost, arguably one of the most popular Featherwing streamers there is. Let's get into it. I've got a size 8 Nymph wet hook in the vise and some 210 UTC thread in black. Started at the hook eye, working my way down. I'm going to snip off this tag. Now I'm going to grab a pre-cut piece of 30 pound test monofilament. This is cut to about two and three quarters inches long. I'm just going to slide this through the hook eye and underneath. And I'm going to take some loose wraps over the top of it here. Now this fly was originated by a man named Herbert Welch in Rangeley, Maine. Uh, Mr. Welsh is credited with tying the first featherwing style streamer in 1901. All right, once I get to the hook eye, I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to apply a lot of pressure here. I'm really going to be binding this monofilament to the hook here. So really tight wraps here. And once I get back here to about the barb of the hook, I'm going to grab a yellow feather and grab a pinch of fibers. These fibers are going to be the tail. So I'm just going to pinch them in my finger like so. Tie them on top. And I'm going to leave this extra tail material. I'm not going to trim it off. That's going to help me build up a big base and an even base as well. And if I trim it off, there might be a hump in it. Just take some even turns forward. And now I'm going to grab a piece of silver tinsel for the rib. I'm going to tie this silver side down. I'm going to wrap it back towards the rear. Now one thing I want to mention about hook size, guys, is uh, these hooks are, you know, fairly small. I wouldn't want to go any smaller than this for a setup. Uh, a lot of people, if I have like a custom order, usually they're asking for a bigger hook orientation, you know, a bigger hook in the front and a bigger hook in the rear. I mean, if you're trolling a big lake, then, and you're expecting to get, you know, a, a record breaking trout or salmon, then, you know, you might want to fit your hook size accordingly. So this is just, you know, a good base, a good starting point, but you know use whatever size you're, you want to use all right so now I'm just gonna tie in a piece of uh, black floss here I'm just gonna tie this forward I started it at the rear because I've already built up quite a bulky body I don't need to run it down twice but I probably will run it twice um, on the front part of the fly I'll show you when I'm done here. All right, so wrap this floss forward. Try to get nice, even touching turns. And bind it down. Snip it off. All right, so now I'm going to wrap my tinsel here. Just going under and towards me. Try to get about four turns or so in there if you're using the small tinsel. All right, now I'm going to tie it off here.
All right, for the front hook, I'm going to use a size 6 nymph streamer hook. This is an umpqua. Start that in the vise. And use the same 210 black UTC thread. And just build up a nice base down to the barb of the hook. Once I get down here, I'll snip off the tag. Now I'll grab that back hook I just made. I can tie it in like that or like this. I'm going to go with that upside down. Take some wraps over the top. Keep wrapping forward. All right, so now I've got a, another piece of silver tinsel. I'm going to tie this in silver side down, tie it all the way back. And you can put a lot of pressure on here and really bind that uh, monofilament to the hook. This is what's going to hold the big fish on. So make sure you put plenty of pressure into it. All right, once I get to the back, I'm actually going to just take the thread back up to the hook eye this time. I know last time I just started my floss from the back, but because I don't have the tail material to bulk up the body, I'm going to double run this black floss. You'll see here. So I'll tie in the floss up here at the hook eye. I'll just snip this tag off and I'm going to run it all the way down and all the way back up. So I'm going to throw a finish in here so this doesn't come unraveled on me. All right, so while I'm wrapping, I guess I've got a moment to speak. Um, these are really great flies, guys. There's a reason they've been around for over a hundred years and they're still in every serious fisherman's fly box around here. They work on trout, they work on salmon. They work on smallmouth, largemouth, stripers, uh, you name it. It really is an incredible style of fly. Uh, it's got great motion with the feathers, uh, with the tandem hooks. Also gives it a little extra motion. It's definitely a classic. It's a proven fish catcher. All right, so now I'm back up to the hook eye. You can see that by running the floss down and then back up, um, I've kind of matched the body size of the small hook. So I'm just going to tie this off and grab my scissors. And I'll snip off this uh, extra floss here. So now I'm going to grab the tinsel. I'm going to go underneath and towards me. Just going to try to wrap as even as possible. And if you've got your uh, black floss body even, that makes this step a whole lot easier, that's for sure. And just bind it down, snip off the excess. Now to grab a yellow feather and snip off a clump of fibers. This, these are going to be the uh, throat, the underneath. So these will go right under here. Pinch them like so. 
take a couple wraps. Sometimes I like to kind of pull them underneath like this. And just bind everything securely. And snip off all these extra yellow ends here. All right, now you can switch your thread to a smaller size, like a 70 denier in black. That way you won't build up too excessive of a head size on this next step. You could even coat this section right here with Sally Hansen's, and that would even really secure the tinsel from moving around and the floss from fraying. All right, I've got some 5 to 7 inch strung hackle here in white. I'm going to need two pairs of these, so that's four feathers total. You want to avoid feathers like this. This won't work. It's too floppy and limp. You need something that will maintain its shape on its own. And you want to avoid things like this, too, that are way too wide and webby. This won't have the, the right motion. What I'm looking for is something about like this. Maybe a little webby at the top and then thins out at the bottom. So you'll need two of these that are as close to identical as you can get. Put them together like this. And then do the other side and get a pair for this one. But you can see that the curves aren't matching. So I'm going to take that bottom feather and I'm going to put it on top. And then they should curve together the same way. Yeah, see? Looks like one feather. The cur they're curving together much better this way. There, so I've got that side complete. All right, so now that I have an idea of the length that I want these, I'm going to strip off all the fibers below that, just like this. So now I've got all the lower stuff stripped off. Now I'm going to grab the other side, and I'm going to do the same, strip off all the stuff below the length I'm looking for. Now the last step is to grab all four feathers, both pairs, and put them together as one and make sure they look good. Looks good. They're the same length. Make sure the tips line up and also make sure down here lines up. See, the side closest to me had a little extra fiber there that I had to pull out. But that looks decent. So now I'm going to grab some cement. I'm just going to grab some Duco cement that I got at the hardware store. Anything will do. Uh, I'm going to take one pair and take the bottom feather. So I've got the bottom feather here. I'm just going to take a drop of glue and set a dot at the base of the feather. Then I'm going to come in with the top feather, make sure the links are the same. Press down where that glue was. And there, you've got a glued pair of feathers. Do it to do the same thing to the other side. Put a drop of glue on at the base. Not too much. Take your top feather and place that on, on top of it. Make sure the links line up. And you can press down. And there's the other side. So now we've got two pairs all glued up. I'm going to bring them down like so together. They're both curving inward towards each other. Let me 
make sure the links line up here. Yes, looks good. All right. All right. So I'm just going to pinch it here and take some loose wraps and go forward. And then I'm going to take the stems and peel them backwards and tie over them like this. And this is going to help keep the feathers from pulling out. Now I'm going to grab the scissors and just cut off those stems. Continue building up a nice black head here. Covering up those stems. Being careful not to crowd the hook eye. So once you get a nice head built up here, you can whip finish. Now, traditionally, you would put some jungle cock eyes on right now. Uh, and you just do that something like this. You just take a feather on each side and tie it in like so. And you'd have some jungle cock eyes just like that but I'm not gonna do jungle cock eyes I'm going to paint my eyes on I prefer painted eyes certainly a lot less expensive so I'm gonna use this black and white acrylic paint and just dip my pencil diameter dowel into the white paint in one dot and there's your white And another dot on this side. Whoops, I didn't have enough paint on the tip of my dowel. So I'll try again. Certainly got enough that time. So now I'm going to let this dry. And I'll come back with my black. Dip the dowel in the black. I usually let the paint dry about an hour before I come back for this step and there now let that dry for about an hour again and come back with the Sally Hansons or head cement of your choice I like two coats of Sally Hansons really makes it shine So I'll get this first coat on here. Let that dry and I'll put another coat on off camera. And of course, put a stem or something through the hook eye so that doesn't get clogged up with head cement. And here's a smaller version, guys, that uh, is commonly used to fish rivers and stuff around here. You can see the tandem versions twice the size this tandem version is definitely a big fly. It's made for trolling lakes and ponds, but try throwing it in one of your small local rivers and, and you'd be surprised what happens. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment. I appreciate you guys watching, so hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you next time.